Good evening, everyone. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Going to be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to be alive today. Yes, it is. It's good to be able to breathe. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Wait a moment or two and let people begin to catch up with us. Mm, mm Mm-mm-mm. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You can see in the background, no tree, no tree. It's gone. We still got our deer on the mantle, though. Keep our, the deer. <laughs> we're going to keep the deer because we have deer around the neighborhood. And bear. I, I don't want to get me a stuffed bear to go in the middle of the room. I uh, don't think so. And I've never been one to like having a deer head in my house hanging on the wall. No. Daddy had one in the house. Never did like it. And uh, I gave it to a family member that wanted it. So, hallelujah. Amen. Just the way it is. Praise God. <coughs> Anybody out there yet? Where's Gail and Greg? Welcome. Hallelujah. <laughs> I got to laughing about something a little while ago and I started coughing again. <laughs> it was funny though. Nah. But Greg, I did not snort. <clears throat> Tina did though. Praise God. Amen. What a day it's been. Whoo. Hey man, God so good. God is so good. Amen. Went from my yearly uh, cardiology exam. Amen. Always fun. Amen. At least it wasn't the colonostomy or the endoscopy. Praise God. But um, and as I was telling Sandy earlier, I said, well, I still have a heart. I could see it. Amen. And when they put me into stress mode, you know, instead of running on a uh, treadmill, they said that they were going to use the other. And I was like, well, I don't mind. I'll do the treadmill. I don't care. You know, whatever. So, and, uh, hey, Sandy and Rob. And, uh, so they did that and they put me on the, the PET scan, run you in that tube and everything for 12 minutes and pull you out and then put it back in 12 and put that stuff in you to cause your, you know, heart rate to go higher and become stressful. And uh, I told them, I said, now let me know when you start that. And they said, okay, we're starting it. And I said, okay. I said, do you feel it? I said, I sort of, I feel something. And I took a breath and I, and I, over the years, I've sort of learned to, uh, monitor my heart rate and to, uh, deflect stress. And so I'm just a stress free type of guy. And, uh, if I'm stressful, you need to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cause I just don't, I'm not going to go to pieces over just anything. <coughs> and so anyway, and, uh, so we got done, you know, I said, you know, your heart rate is, uh, 60 something. I said, well, that's good. That's good. And I said, what did it get up to? And they, they were, 80 something or whatever. And then she said, your blood pressure was 187 over da da da. I said, what? I said, oh, we did that. I said, oh, well, good. Cause I didn't come in that way. Okay. And I said, I'm not leaving that way either in Jesus name. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I told him, I said, now when I go in that machine, I was thinking, they, they told me it's going to be four to six hours, but it ended up being just, you know, an hour or whatever after you get in there. And, um, so I said, now, I, number one, I may go to, what? Was it a tunnel? Is it a tunnel? It was like a tunnel, like a big old long tunnel, like a MRI, you know, without the magnets. <laughs> and so, um, number one, I might go to sleep. Number two, I'm prone to talking when I'm sleeping. And I said, number three, I'll probably pray, okay? You'll hear me praying. And it's okay if you hear me praying, even though you don't understand what I might be saying. <laughs> <coughs> 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 
<laughs> I sort of left it there, you know. <laughs> so, hallelujah. I have, amen, I have had conversations out loud with Jesus. And uh, nobody heard the other side, but they heard me. And uh, and we were conversing. And, and uh, I had that when I had the cardio version. And... Uh, uh, back a couple of years ago, and so, and uh, so it was just fun, amen. And uh, I'm just thankful. God's so good. He's just so good. That's enough about that. Praise God. But everything is good. I still got a heart, and I live a stress-free life. And uh, everything is uh, as good as good or the same as it was uh, a few years ago when they did it before, amen. So. Uh, Thank God I, I stand on the scripture in Psalms that my heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. And just like I say, by his stripes I was and were healed, so I am healed. And and my body is getting better and stronger. And uh, I know most of my problems is according to my weight. I had a good doctor friend a number of years ago, a number of years ago. Lord, let's talk about how many years ago. And he said, if you will buckle down and lose the weight. You will never have problems with this, 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 and this. But if you gain weight, your body is going to begin to have this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. You can pray and believe and thank God, and I will too. But if you don't do what you need to do, this is what's going to happen. And so I agree with that. So amen. And you know, we, you know, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. We talked about some things Sunday, you know, cause we want to do what God wants us to do. We want to live a long and healthy life. We want to live, uh, uh, to be able to be productive in the ministry. We want to be able to, uh, be there for our families. And, uh, you know, and, and as I was talking to the Lord the other morning, Tuesday morning, I guess it was like three thirty or whatever. I came down and, and, uh, had some uh, worship music on and had my cup of coffee. Yes, it was early, but I enjoyed it. And so, and I was sitting there just talking and then just worshiping and talking to the Lord. And, and then I caught myself for a couple of hours, I guess we were just conversing and praying and talking and, and just sharing. And, and after a little while, Tina came down and, and I still had the worship music on and just talking to him and she came in and we talked a little bit. And so uh, I like doing that. Amen. It, it, it's a conversation. Prayer is just a conversation. It's a conversation. And, you know, and, and I would be talking to the Lord and, and I would be, you know, just conversing and praying and, and just opening my heart up. And then, you know, when I was asking certain questions or, or questioning him about certain things, and all of a sudden a song would come on with the answer to the question. And I was like, Lord, this is just too rich. Amen. And the presence of God would fill the room and you enjoy it. And uh, so it's just, it, it, it's powerful. Amen. Yes. And it, you just have to take that time. And devote that time to talk to him. And, uh, cause the more you do that, the more the changes come in your life. And, uh, it, it causes you to be equipped to do the work of the ministry. Number one. And, and number two, it'll, it'll change you. I mean, from the inside out, praise God. And as I was talking about Sunday, you know, we have the various inlets. We have our eyes, which is the eye gates. We have the ear gates where we hear stuff, and in our mouth is where we speak whatever we hear or see. And uh, and the, when we begin to speak it, it's when we begin to believe it because the, you know we we call those things that be not as though they were, and you know we'll say things and uh, we'll believe it when we start talking about it. That's when we begin to believe it because why talk about something if you're not believing it, you know? And uh, so. I thank God that I, I talk about him, I share about him, and uh, I love him. Uh, I'm thankful that, uh, not as a pastor, but as a Christian, as a Christian. You know, before I had a calling, there was a calling there, but before I knew there was a calling, I became a Christian, uh, a, a sold-out person to God that loved Jesus more than myself, more than my necessary food, and that's been reversed, but I'm changing that because I love the Lord more than my necessary food. I love the Lord more than than pleasing my flesh. Amen? And that's something we have to all work on in one realm or the other, you know, whether it's the eye gate, 
whether it's the ear gate or if it's the mouth gate. Amen. And uh, so I'm just sharing, just sharing. God's so good to us. We live so far beneath the privileges that he has provided for us in his word and in the kingdom of God that he's laid out for us. Amen. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, Robin. And, uh, and Binks. Hello. And, uh, uh, God's just got so much in store for us. Um, I've never been one really to talk about new year, new year's resolutions because so many people have those and then they break them, you know? And, uh, but you know, each day, each day we have an opportunity to do something good. Amen. You know, I heard Matthew Hagee talking about that just uh, this morning. You know, I've never really listened to him very much, but when I saw him, I, he was speaking and I felt that I needed to hear what he had to say in that two minute time. And he was just sharing. And, uh, so, you know, that's, uh, Pastor Hagee's son. And, uh, so it, it's, it's powerful. It's so powerful that we have all these days, 365 days a year, that we can live for Jesus, that we can allow him to change us day by day. Every day is an opportunity to advance. Every day is another fresh beginning. Oh, glory to God. Somebody needed to hear that. Amen. You don't have to wait for six months or a year or two years. Every day is a fresh new start. When you go down to sleep and you wake up, you get another fresh opportunity to live a new day, a new day, a new day. And you cannot allow yesterday's burdens and yesterday's problems to continue to drag you down. Yes. And, and, and I said Sunday, don't allow your past mistakes in 2022 to come into 2023. We've got so much to do in 2023. Amen. New opportunities, new levels, new shifts, new blessings, new good things that God wants to do for us. But if we're steadily occupied by our past, we can't do the things that God has for us in the future. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. And so, you know, um, I'm thankful that we have uh, every day to make choices. Choices. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Amen. Choose you this day. You know, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I used to, you know, I, I would say certain things at home when I was uh, living at home with mom and dad. And, and, and daddy said, as long as you're living in this house, this is the way you're going to be. Well, I challenged him on that. But I found out he was the head of the house. And he made sure I understood it. Amen. And, and, and that came with feelings and also had memories attached to it. Praise the Lord. So, you know, I was told years ago, said, don't you ever take that broom away from your mother unless you're going to sweep the floor with it. Amen. And I was, I was like, yeah, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, anger would rise up on me as a youth. I mean, I, I don't like to be angry. I don't like to be pushed to the point that, uh, I get that angry. And if I ever get to the place where I cry when I'm angry, I'm, I'm, I'm just thanking God that I'm not there no more. Amen. Cause I used to become a loose cannon and, uh, just become, uh, just, it's crazy, amen, but I thank God that I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, amen, and the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus, amen, and, uh, you know, 2023 is an opportunity for us to grow up, and to do what we've been taught all these years, to do what we've been taught, 
you know, as a Christian, salvation, to walk in love, to forgive one another, to, to love one another, to care for one another, and, and look after one another, c- carry each other's burdens, meaning, meaning, if a person is hurting, you, you go to them and help them get out of the hurt and, and pray with them and get them out of that. Amen. If someone is broken down, you, you try to help them get back up on their feet. Amen. And we can't fix everything, but we can definitely be a blessing and pray and be there to, to, uh, to help, you know, check on them ever so often. Amen. And do what we can do. If we have the means to do something, we should be able to share and help somebody. Amen. You know, I, I told somebody years ago, I said, you know, I, I can't fix your problem, but I can help you get out of your problem. Amen. And, uh, and I even I even told, I think, Tiffany Porter, I said, you know, if something is just uh, related to needing money, we throw enough money at it. You can get rid of the problem. Amen. The problem is most of the time we don't have the money. Not because we hadn't got it or hadn't had it, but we we have been so frivolous with our money and not thrifty, amen, and, and just bought all kind of crazy stuff. And then we put it away in rooms that we don't even see it again, or either we forget we even got it, amen. And uh, wow, I'm, I'm meddling now. I'm meddling, amen. I'm meddling. You know, I, I went through... Uh, Tina and I went through our garage. We've been going through our storage room and, and, uh, you know, we have a big old storage with a bunch of stuff in it. And, and we've hewed two of those down, two large storages down. You know, I had, uh, and we had a five bedroom, three bath home here in Kingsport when we first got married. And then I had a home in Knoxville, a, uh, three bedroom, uh, two bath. And then I had the home down in Georgia where I was raised, my mom and dad's, and I had a tractor trailer full of stuff from mom and dad, and I had a barn full of stuff, the house full of stuff. And I'm like, where are you going to put all this stuff? I mean, you can't, I mean, I mean, what are you going to do with all this? And so, you know, we sold a lot of it, and then we had the ministry. I had a lot of stuff with that, and we are able to, you know, bless and be able to change and sell and get rid of, to you know, to be able to, to live and do the things we needed to do for the ministry, growing it. You know, now we have a property that's debt-free. We have, you know, very nice uh, equipment in there. We have very nice, you know, chairs in there. You know, it's in an old building, but the old building is still there. And we're able to walk in and have church and see people get saved and healed and set free. And we can be able to teach and preach and, and bring the power of God in to bring people to places of getting deliverance. And casting out demons and seeing people set free, marriages restored. Amen. You know, th- this is 2023. It- it- it's time for us to begin to do the ministry. Amen. And-, and not just talk about the joy of the Lord, but experience it. Amen. Mm. That's good. Not just talk about the power of God, but operate in it. Not just come to church and and, and not in, involve ourselves into praise and worship. Let's get involved with it. Amen. Let, let's get involved with it. I mean, I, I mean, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. <coughs> get involved with it. Get involved with it. Amen. Get involved with it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, you know, uh, some churches that I've been a part of over the years, you know, at, at visiting, not visiting, and then a few, the few that I had first went to, to help out and uh, associate, you know, and different things like that, not where I pastored. The churches I pastored, uh, they have been, I mean, uh, from one end of Tennessee to the other, uh, Georgia, Arkansas, uh, Alabama, uh, Oklahoma, all over the different areas. Amen. The people I have pastored, they have been the most Wonderful, precious, cream of the crop people in, the, in this world that you could have. And I mean that sincerely. I've got folks that come on here and, uh, you know, from Dallas, Georgia, uh, Carrollton, Georgia, Alabama, uh, Florida, different places that know me. And, and then I pastored or either helped them in different situations in churches and, and associate pastors and, and things and, and just reconnected this last week with, uh, my pastor, Randall Frazier from the Bremen Church of God. 
he and his wife Yvonne, precious people that I worked with for years, and we just reconnected, and and uh, they're down in Georgia, as far as I know, still pastoring, and uh, I love that man and his family, and God put us together for such a time as this, and I talked about how the the fun times that we had together, and where I I I I, I had uh, just started in the ministry. And he allowed me to work with him, to learn from him, to go with him, to study with him, to pray with him, to be able to preach in his pulpit. It gave me his opportunity to, to at his church, to minister, to sing, to, to lead music and different things. And, and then also got to branch out in different other churches and fill in for pastors and different ones when they were out of town. It's powerful when you begin to connect with people. And when you get to do that, make sure you take that opportunity like I did. I did. I took the opportunity. I said, I want you to know, Pastor Randall, how much I appreciate you. You are such a blessing to me. I I will never, ever, (coughs) never, ever be able to tell you how much I appreciate you. And uh, how much I love and care for you. Amen. For giving me opportunities. And, you know, we can only pin roses or bless people while they're alive. Let's don't wait till somebody dies and then want to get up and say something or either, you know, send flowers and say, I wish I could have said this or wished I'd had one more minute. Take the time now and make the time. Make that adjustment. You know, I've, I've, I've had funerals where I've went and they, and I've had people and, and Tina and I, when we first got together, we went out to a field and we had a, uh, out in the country, not far from here. And I was asked to speak and, uh, I did the funeral and I said, you know, uh, the Lord put it in my heart. You know, you can't call mama up now. You can't talk to grandma. You can't talk to your sister. You can't talk to your cousin. You can't talk because they're gone now. Don't let the opportunity to make things right with your family until it's too late. Don't wait. And so it was at that time, you know, many people were touched by that because the Lord wanted that said. You know, I I, I am so thankful that in most cases, I'm thankful in my family and my mom and dad. You know, I I love them. They they raised me right. I love them. My mother, you know, when she uh, passed that night, I was able to talk to her while I was getting ready to come to her home, come to where she was in the hospital. And, uh, and she, you know, had emphysema and, uh, COPD and some things. She, uh, 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 and that's, you know, when she was talking and she said, I, 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 I love, I love, I love you. And I said, I love you, mama. I love you too. And I'm coming. And I said, just calm down. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, Clifford's coming. Clifford's coming. It's going to be all right. And I'll be there. And I said, but you just lay there and you rest and don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. You know, I love you. You've been a very good mother to me. And she was. And that night they gave her a Tylenol. She went to sleep. That's what she asked me. She said, I just want to be able to go to sleep and wake up in heaven. And she in the best way she could understand that, that's what happened. She went to sleep around 1030. And they went in to check on her around 11. And she was gone. Amen. That's wow. That's powerful. But I had the opportunity to speak to her. Now, as I was saying this, don't bring 2022 into 2023. Learn and grow from the mistakes that we have made in 2022. Don't rehearse those problems and go back and do it again. Amen. Learn from it. Grow. From it, become better than you were then. I'm thankful that I'm better this year than I was last year. I'm stronger now than I was in 2022. I'm thankful that I'm healthier now than I was in 2022. And and we got to realize, we got to realize, if you don't take charge of it, the devil's going to beat you down all the way anyway. 
and everybody else is. I mean, you know, uh, you know, you got everybody around the world trying to take us out. Amen. You know, you got all these different sicknesses and diseases that's coming about. That's you know, different things, whether they're man-made or either this evil. And then also, you know, the various other things that's out there like normal, trying to take us all out. But thank God, we, we got to trust God and do everything we can do to keep ourselves healthy and, and you know, lose the weight. And I, I mean, that's the pot calling the kettle black, but I'm saying it. Because I'm preaching to me too, that I see me. I don't see you except your name, but I see me and I'm talking to myself. Amen. And got to lose that weight and get in a better shape and be able to become stronger and walk and get your breathing in, so in, in sync. Amen. And if you got bad habits, you got to start stopping some of this. You know, it became a habit because you continued doing it, you know, and, and so, you know, whatever it is. You know, I mean, hello, got to close some doors, got to close some doors and break some associations. I mentioned that the other day, but I wanted to repeat it again because it's important. Got to close doors that's left open, amen, and stop some various associations, amen. Now, the Bible says the willing and obedient will eat the good of the land. I want you to know, going into 2023, God says in his word that he is crowning the year with goodness. He's crowning the year with goodness. There's goodness all around. There's blessings all around. There's enough blessings to go around for everyone. There's enough healing to go around for everyone. There, There is power and, 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 uh, to remove all the bondages of the past, all the errors, all the, uh, issues that we've been through. There's enough. The blood still is still powerful. Amen. The blood is still powerful. The word of God is still strong. Hallelujah. It never even gets old. Amen. The word of God is strong. Hallelujah. Hello, Susan, Tim. The word of God is strong, glory to God. And it's able to do what it says it can do. <coughs> so, amen. But the willing and obedient will eat the good of the land. The willing and obedient. And if you want the blessings of God, you got to participate. That You know, the blessings of God are out there. You got to participate in it. You, you, if you want the blessings of God, you got to do the things that God says to do. Amen. You got to be willing and you got to be obedient and, and, and you got to try to get closer to the Lord by reading and studying and praying and singing and worshiping him. Amen. And making melody in your hearts unto the Lord. You know, the things that we're supposed to think on Philippians 4. Hallelujah. Philippians 4. Now, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that you're here tonight. I'm thankful that you're on here. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Hallelujah. I'm thankful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Others will be popping on here in a little bit. Others will come on later and listen. But I'm thankful that you're here with us now. But uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, Philippians 4 tells us, <laughs> let's see here. Thank you, darling. Let's see. Well, let's just start at uh, Philippians 4. Look at verse 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech, and he goes on down there talking about the different name. I'm not going to butcher them. Mercy, I'm not. Verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. And he says, be careful for nothing, but, with, but in everything. By prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, 
Let your request be made known unto God. Mm-hmm. Listen to what he says. And, mm-hmm. and, it goes right there with it. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And the peace of God. If we've ever needed the peace of God, we need it in 2023. Yes. It, 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 you can't trust Washington, never have, but the Bible says we pray for those in authority. We pray for our president. Amen. And, and I pray that he be enlightened and that, that, that he receives Jesus in his heart, that he sees the error of his way. Amen. That he can be able to lead and guide this country the way it's supposed to be, not by the way others are telling him to do it. Amen. Are you still here? You know, people have said so many things about this. But listen, <coughs> in the Old Testament, there were a lot of kings that were not godly. Now, I'm not saying President Biden not. I'm just saying. When the kings were not godly, God dealt with it. He sent He sent a man or a woman and a prophet came and spoke and then when they ran Pharaoh, Pharaoh let them go. But then he, he repented and he wanted to go after them. And then the people are out there. They're out there and they're like, what are we going to do? We could have stayed where we were and have been fine. We could have had those leeks and onions. Oh, yay. Oh, boy, that sounds good. Amen. I want to go back to Egypt. I hear Keith Green. Love you, Keith. Amen. I love you, brother. And uh, he, he was a prophet before his time. And, uh, and, you know, they, they said, well, we can't go anywhere because the, uh, they're after us behind us. And now we've got the sea in front of us. We can't go anywhere. What are we going to do now? What are we going to do now, Moses? Amen. What are we going to do? And God provided. God's going to provide in 2023 and 2024. Whoever the new president comes in, God is going to take care of us people. We are his sheep. We are his blood. We are his family. And until we leave this earth, God's going to be with us and not against us. Amen. I mean, hell is blowing. The devil's stomping. And there's all kind of things around the world that's out to get us. But greater is he that sent us than he that's in the world. I mean, we, we, it's a win-win situation. If something happens to us, Woo! We're going to heaven. We're going to be with Jesus. But until that time, I'm going to fight the devil tooth and toenail. And I'm going to still preach this gospel that God's a good God and his word works. And by his stripes, we were and are healed. Amen. Are you still here? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, he says in Philippians 4 verse 8, says, finally, brethren, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. But he don't stop there. He goes next and he said, those things, what things? What are you talking about, Paul? What things? Those things which we have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Oh, hallelujah. You want the God of peace to be with you? There it is. Amen. Think on these things. Think on these things. Praise God. Think on these things. Think on these things. What are you going to think about? Well, we're going to think about what God says. Hallelujah. Yeah, but everybody else is telling us this. I don't care what everybody else is saying. I don't care. Amen. (coughs) You got to do what you got to do. You take your medicine that you've been prescribed to take. Trust God. Amen. You pay your bills. And you get to live in your house. Amen. You pay the electricity. 
You stay warm or cool. Praise God. You do what you know to do, and you got to trust God. Hallelujah. Amen. There, there's so much fear in the body of Christ, and, and people have trust uh, Washington and everything else so much that they believed it over what the Word of God says. Amen. And that's sad. But for me and my house, we're trusting Jesus. Praise God. We're going to trust the Word. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. 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 Now, I want to read something to you. Let's see where we're going, Lord. Where we're going. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's see. Let me look if we'll go there or not. I don't know. We'll take our time. You know, we've, we've got plenty of time. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I mean, Andy Griffith's already been on. He'll be back on again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians six fourteen. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Second Corinthians six fourteen. This is where we have to make choices, okay? We have to make choices. Godly choices. Second Corinthians six fourteen. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communication hath light with darkness? Amen. You know, I use this scripture. If I'm talking to someone that's wanting to get married, you know, I used to do a lot of marriages over the years. And uh, I pulled off a lot of it, so uh, various reasons. Uh, and so uh, I, I, one of the first questions is, you know, are, are you saved? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Are you going to church? And, and they're like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, good. And I've had one say, no, I want nothing to do with God, and I'm not going to go to church. And, and the lady said, well, I'm saved, and I'm going to go to church, and I'm going to win him over. No, you're not. Amen. I mean, only God could do that. Don't you get fooled. Amen. Because I've seen it too many times over the years. Don't settle. Ladies, don't settle. Men, don't settle. Amen. I'm, I'm telling you, men, makeup can only go so far. Praise God. It, it, makeup can't fix a personality. Amen. Oh, boy. Uh, glory to God. I've seen things get real bad. People look so good in public, and then when they get home, it's a, it's a totally different situation. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir now. I know that. So, But what have we got to do with darkness? We have to make decisions, business decisions. We can't be unequally yoked with business partners. Amen. We, we have to go to... God and godly people to be able to understand and if we're in if we're in connections with people that are not godly amen and you know like well well they they believe in Jesus they talk about the Lord well you know that's good they talk about the Lord amen you know the devil talks about the Lord too the Bible says the demons fear and tremble mm, Lord help us all praise the Lord Amen. I've had people to talk about God in one breath and then cuss the next breath and uh, be drunkards, wife beaters, uh, be, you know, druggers, be um, uh, various things. Amen. And uh, it, you can't have that. Amen. Hello, somebody. You know, uh, that's when, when you know, the rubber meets the road, life has got to change. Amen. Because God wants the best for us. Think about that a minute. God wants the best for us. Amen. He wants the best for you. He, he wants to, 2023 to be a, a uh, bumper crop for you. We've got to believe that those that chased after us in 2022, that they're, they're, they, they laid wait 
and they didn't sleep, they didn't eat because they were trying to find ways to destroy you. We got to believe God that the Lord God himself is going to handle that situation, that we trust him. Are you listening to me? Yes. Turn everything else off right now. Turn everything else off and listen to me. I'm going to give you a second. You need to hear this. You've got to let God fight your battles. Mm -hmm. We hadn't got time to fight battles. Our job is to do what he's called us to do. God's going to make a way where there is no way. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us he's going to make the hard places smooth. He's going to make the high places a plain. Hello, somebody. He's going to fix those things that concern you because what concerns you concerns God. What concerns God ought to concern you. You know, God's all about souls. And I want you to know, listen, listen, praise God. We, we're believing God for standing room only. And, and, it, and there's, more, there's more room than there is standing, praise God. <coughs> but that's okay because it's getting better. It's getting better. It's getting better. You're getting better. You're getting stronger. Amen. By the stripes of Jesus, you're getting better. And he's going to fix those things concerning you because he cares for you and he loves you. There's people out there that's on the road to in, in, the, in the road of indecision, in the valley of indecision. But God's going to help them to get back on the right road to bring them in where they're supposed to be. Because there's people that's supposed to be there with us. Amen. Uh, there's supposed to be people there. And because of silly things and because of, uh, uh, of uh, silly doctrines and, and silly beliefs, they're missing God. And, and, and pride's another thing. Amen. But that's okay. Whether we go by many or by few, we're going to still get the job done. Amen. Praise God. Now, Jeremiah chapter 24. I'm so thankful you're here with us tonight. Amen. Did you drop by? Did you drop by? You just didn't drop in here by accident. By happenstance, you're here because God brought you here. Amen. What the heck? Sometime or another, I really wrote in this Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah. All right, let's get there now. Come on. Come on, fingers. Don't mess me up. There we go. I'll get there and my fingers move it again. Jeremiah chapter 24. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, ma'am, Gail. Make the crooked path straight. Glory to God. Oh, tell you what, in Tennessee and Alabama, there's a lot of crooked roads. That way in Georgia, too. Hallelujah. Now, look, Jeremiah 24. And uh, I know, I know. Verse 5, then said, turn ye again, now every one, from the evil way, and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord hath given unto you, and to your fathers forever and ever. And go not after other gods to serve them, and to worship them, and provoke me not to anger. Hello, with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. Hallelujah. That's chapter 25. Now let's read the actual <clears throat> one we want to go to. That was good, though. Hallelujah. Now, in uh, Jeremiah 24, verse 5, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, like the good figs, so will I acknowledge them, that are carried away captive of Judah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, whom I have sent out of this place to the land of the Chaldeans for, the, for their good. 
For I will set my eye upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. I'm telling you, God wanting to do some things for you in 2023. Praise God. Some of you have suffered in 2022. Some of us have. Some of us have really fought. I mean, fought. But we're still here, praise God. But God is what we've had uh, many opportunities to be able to say, but God. <coughs> Amen. Praise God. We're here by the grace of God and by the mercy of God. We are still here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And getting better every minute. Praise God. Getting better. Getting better. It may not look like it is, but that's okay. We walk by faith and not by sight. Right, Tim Johnson? We walk by faith and not by sight. Glory to God. Walk by faith and not by sight. We have the spirit of David. We have the spirit of praise. We have the spirit of faith. Hallelujah. That spirit of faith that will take a, a, a minnow will reach up and slap a whale. Praise God. Amen. Woo! Praise the Lord God. We have it. We're willing and obedient. And we're eating the good of the land. Hallelujah. Now, Jeremiah, while we're there in that book, look at Jeremiah 29 with me. And let's look at verse 8. Oops, sorry. Make the alarm go off again. Don't want to do that. Had that enough today two or three times. Jeremiah 29 and verse 8. Praise you, Jesus. For thus saith the Lord. Oh, praise God. Make sure I'm in the right one. 29 verse 8. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets listen to me. Listen. Are you listening? Are you listening? Did you turn off the TV? Come on. Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to your dreams, which ye cause to be dreamed. You cause the dream. You cause the dream. I'll explain that in a minute. For they prophesy falsely. Hello. Falsely. Falsely. And the word falsely is they prophesy lies unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you, in causing you to return to this place. See what he's telling them back there? And verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, they give you and expect it in. Hallelujah. Amen. Whew. Then shall you call upon me. You shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all of your heart. And verse 14. And I will be found to you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place which I called you to be carried away captive. Hallelujah. Now, I know the Lord was talking about Israel, bringing them back in different things like that. But we also know that God gives this word for an example for a, a, to lead us and to guide us and to bring us into the place that we need to be for him and with him and, and his power to give us the strength to be able to live and know that God's for us, not against us. Hallelujah. Amen. He loved us so much that he gave his son Jesus to buy us back, praise God, from the devil in his kingdom. Mm. I don't know about you, but that's good stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, that's good stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Let's see here. 
It says in Psalm 65, 11, in the Amplified, it says, You crown the year with your bounty and goodness. Amen? He, he crowns the year. We've got a good year coming. I, I'm believing God for bumper crop. I, I've been giving. I've been giving and in every way I can. We, you know, when I didn't have money, I gave time. When I didn't have time, I gave stuff. Amen. And, and, and uh, whoo, glory to God. Because I'm just, just that way. I'm just, I'm, I, hey, praise God, I'm a giver. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Now, it says in Psalm 65, 11 in the New American Standard, it gives us a little bit deeper clue here. It says, Thou hast crowned the year with thy bounty, and thy paths drip with fatness. Thy paths. Amen. So he's got a path. The pathway to righteousness. Oh, 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 oh. oh yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Ooh, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And it tells us over in Numbers, Numbers chapter 13. You know, it, it tells us that this is where I was going Sunday morning. I didn't finish. Amen. But in Numbers chapter 13, it talks about the fatness. Amen. Moses, see, he sent out 12 spies into the promised land to find out uh, what the land was about. He wanted to know what the land was, how it was, who the people were, if they were fortified or if they lived in tents, what they had, if it was good, if they were big people, little people, uh, if it was a land rich with goodness and everything like that, or if it was just what it was. Because God had gave him the land. God said, it's your land. Go in and possess it. So he sends in spies to check it out. And upon their return, the spies came to report, and they said the land was fat. They wanted to know if they were fat or lean. And the Bible says that they described it. It was a land flowing with milk and honey. Oh. <coughs> in the fact, the land was so fat or abundant that one cluster of grapes grown on that soil was so large for one person to carry, they had to put one cluster of grapes on a stick and carry it between two men. Wow. I mean, those grapes had to be, I mean, at least that big. Or, or big, bigger than our fist. They meant each grape. And you think about how many grapes is on there. You know, I got thinking about that. You know, the Bible talks about that, you know, there were giants there, that, you know, the giants of Achan, you know, and they were there. And those giants, they could just reach over and get it like we could, like we pick up a grape and go like this. They, The giants were so huge. That's what they would do, those big old grapes, and they see them like that. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. And God wanted to bless Israel. He wanted to bring Moses and the people of God there to that rich place. But they had to do something about it. Amen? Yeah. Oh, glory to God. He said, it's your land. It's rich. It's blessed. It's there. But you got to go in and possess it. Yeah, but there's somebody already there. That's okay. Some of you believe in God for a house. Somebody's in that house. They're getting that house ready for you. They're preparing it. Amen. You know, and at the right time, hello, Dowds. You know, you're in Florida and you're wanting to buy a house up here and you know the Lord has led you to this area and the Lord brought you to that property. Amen. That you knew it was going to be a fixer upper and you got it at a good price. Now you've got somebody there and you've got a place and it's a blessed place. Be able to do ministry and also live there and be able to do the things you're called to do. Amen. And then we're connected together because we're DNA. Praise God. You brought it. You, God brought you here to work with us and we're working together with you because we're one in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Amen. So now, listen. 
it was so large that they had to carry it back on a pole between. Whew. Praise God. Now the Bible tells us in Numbers 13.33 but that the that the uh, the spies came back with that evil report. You know, let me say this. There's always going to be somebody with an evil report. Oh, Lord. There's always going to be somebody with an evil report. Yep. Whose report are you going to believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. His report says I am healed. His report says I am filled. His report says victory. Amen. And whatever. I don't know the rest of it. Amen. And that, that's a good one y'all to do. Y'all write that down, Tina. Pulled it out just a few minutes. Pulled it out. Pulled it out. Amen. I've already pulled it. She's already got it pulled out. Look at that. God knows what he's doing. God already knew what he was doing before I said that. Hallelujah. Cause he's an on time God. Yeah, he is. I said he's an on time God. Yes, he is. He might not come when you want him, but he'll always be on time. He's an on time God. Yeah, he is. Amen. Yes, Woo! Praise God. Well, I love you tonight. I, I don't want to wear you out. I want to wear my welcome out. Praise God. But uh, I'm so thankful that just because somebody has an evil report doesn't mean you have to believe that report. You don't have to accept that report. Amen. You know, I, uh, uh, who was it? The, a nurse or a doctor a while back? Uh, oh, 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 yeah, yeah. I had went to my physical Back in, what was it, October, Tina? October, I guess it was my physical. I hadn't had one in a few years, number of years. You know, I'm just not a doctorology. I'm not a doctor, doctorologist. I just don't, unless I need one. If I need one, I'll go. I'm, until then, I don't go. Hey, Amen. I'm doing good. And so, and I went in, and, and uh, as soon as they did the blood work and all this stuff, they and uh, the, the uh, uh, nurse practitioner or whatever, doctor assistant said, well, how long have you been a diabetic? I said, never have been. I said, well, how long have you had diabetes? I said, never have had diabetes. I said, yeah, but your A1C is so high. And I'm like, what? What do you mean my A1C? I know what A1C is. And I said, it can't be high there because I'm not, I'm not diabetic. I mean, not. Amen. I'm not. And so, you know, she told me what, you know, the number was. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, not when it came home and transported. And I'm like, my goodness, I'd had some sweets, you know, a couple of days there for a while. And, and believe me, I got into the eating the sweet thing. And it caused my, and it went up like 140. It was just 140. I mean, 140. Okay. And so my doctor, Dr. Rogers, he calls back the next day. And, and, and I said, hello. I said, uh, uh, the Sherry, the nurse there said, uh, Cliff, this is Sherry. Hey, you're not, di I heard Dr. Rogers over everybody. You're not diabetic. You're not diabetic. You don't have pancreatitis. You don't have, I said, doc, I appreciate that, but I already knew because <coughs> You know, uh, my blood sugar usually, and I keep a meter because when I had COVID a few times now, that uh, I keep that because it elevates things, okay? And so uh, uh, it usually runs between 80 to 120, sometimes 137 or whatever, and we just according to what I eat, you know, just like anybody. And so for a guy that's 300 pounds, uh, you know, uh, I'm thankful, but I'm making decisions. I'm making choices. I'm, I'm making changes. You know, it's been a few years ago that I lost 80 pounds, okay? And, and believe me, it felt different to be different. I looked different. I felt great, could do anything, amen? And so I'm going that way again. I'm going to lose 100 plus pounds, amen? And I don't want to be a bone bag, but I definitely want to be a healthy man, amen? So I love you. I want you to know that. That's enough about me. You've got things that you're adjusting and God is going to adjust in your heart and talk to your mind. He's going to talk to your spirit. Think little adjustments, little adjustments that we can make changes everything. Amen. You know, if, if, 
<coughs> if the rocket ship or the shuttle is off just a millimeter, by the time it gets up into space, you know, a, few, a number of miles or a thousand miles or two thousand miles, whatever, it's going to miss. It, it's going to miss its destination. We've got to stay plugged in so we don't get off course that will stay on course and get to our destination that God has for us. Amen. So, Father, I thank you. I, I lift up those that, are, that have been going through different illnesses, and and Lord, we have some few. We got a few unspoken requests. We we thank you, Father, for being with those people, and we thank you, Lord, for for a Gail Duggar for her to be able to get her oxygen levels back where it's supposed to be, and and for that uh, uh, the different uh, uh, wounds on her legs to heal and to completely get over that. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for Robin and Tiffany to get stronger and get better, Lord, and their physical bodies. And I thank you, Lord, for Doc and Peg. And we thank you, Lord, for Larry and and, and Sandy and Rob and Tim and Susan and 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 you know Kim Baumgartner. We we thank God for you and yeah. and and for Gail and uh, Greg and and all the others. From one end of the country to the other, Darlene, we lift you up, Joey and Ladina, and different others across the country. And from one end of Tennessee to the other, we lift you up, Gail Shote, be thou made whole. We come against a cancer that's just ravaging your body. The devil's a liar by the stripes of Jesus. We believe. We believe that you'll live and not die, and you'll come through this, and it'll be another testimony for the power of God in your life. Amen. We love you, and we look forward to seeing you Sunday morning. Hallelujah! At 11 o'clock. You be blessed and have sweet rest in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Don't look at things you don't need to. Don't listen to things, and don't let your mind go places it shouldn't go, because that's what you're going to end up dreaming on, as I was going to say and explain dreams that you make up don't allow that sources people love you have a good night